In this tutorial, we're going to discuss a new feature in Sidewinder, which uh, essentially allows us to bring in a AutoCAD uh, DWG file, uh, overlay it on our uh, vertical profile, and uh, enter our whole uh, pulley and uh, uh, drive uh, geometry uh, directly from Sidewinder, which is pretty slick. Uh, so we're going to just start with a file here, which um, essentially just has a single polyline on it. Uh, this was just imported from CAD using the import option where we can, uh, this has always been there, you can import a polyline, uh, you can select what layer from your CAD file, yada, 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 um, and that polyline can have arcs uh, for your concave and convex curves. It also can have small arcs going around all your pulleys, so you can bring in your pulley, uh, full pulley geometry. If I actually look at like this CAD file, I could actually draw a polyline and enter all of these pulleys and, and bring that polyline straight into AutoCAD, um, or straight into Sidewinder, excuse me. Um, you can also still import the, uh, the ground line as you always uh, have been able to, but now we have this DWG overlay option. Uh, so what this is gonna let me do is bring in a CAD file. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click a CAD file and this happens to be the CAD file I just showed you and it's gonna bring that CAD file in. Now something um, you'll notice is that uh, Sidewinder by convention, tail's always at the, at the left side, head's always at the right. This AutoCAD file was actually drawn uh, backwards, so we actually need to mirror that. Um, so we're gonna re-import that, we're gonna click the mirror and re-import that. And again, it's just gonna bring the, the AutoCAD file in and whatever coordinates uh, we did, we did also have to specify the scale. I knew the scale for this drawing was a thousand to one. Um, but where this is actually located, and it might not be the whole conveyor. We might just be bringing in a drawing with just the head or just a drawing with the tail, and they might have different scalings or whatever. Um, so we're going to have to set what that offset is. Now, uh, clearly I could manually put in that, but that's a lot of work. Uh, so what we can do is if we just zoom in here and I right click, we now have CAD overlay options. So I just right clicked on the background and there's kind of three location or, or offset uh, options here. If I know I had the tail pulley, if I had head pulley, or if I have some element in between. So I'm gonna just click the head pulley location here. And if I click on the head pulley, just zoom right in there, I'm gonna click right at the top of the head pulley. And there we go. So it just entered our X and Y offset. And if I reset this and resume in, it should be right there. And there it is. So now we can see our um, conveyor, uh, the drawing for this uh, specific conveyor. Um, a lot of times, obviously, when, when you're laying out a, a new file, you might not have this and you just do it, you know, your old way and put in, a, do it however uh, you were doing it before. Uh, this is just, if you do have the CAD file, this lets you overlay this. Now we would have, uh, again, we could have brought in all these elements as part of the polyline. Uh, we could have clicked up here and just inserted a bunch of elements and entered the length and, and height of each one and the pulleys and whatnot. Um, but what we've got is a right click option that click to add elements below the selected row. So we're going to click this to add elements below whatever row we currently have selected. So we're going to select this pulley because this is our last one. We want to keep adding stuff after it. And when we click this, we can now basically just go in here and just add elements around our conveyor, which is pretty cool. Now, it's cool, but like this, this is really a pulley, right? So we really want to put a pulley there. And this was also a pulley here. And obviously that should have had the wrap angle going the other way around. So it's not, it's kind of cumbersome. So we actually can do better than that. So it's, I'm just going to delete everything again. I just deleted all of those. And looking at this file, I can see I've got four different pulley types. I already know that because I've been in this file, but I'm going to actually set this to pulley four just because I'm gonna go into the, uh, the pulley and shaft information and I'm gonna put my diameters for my pulley. So as I'm drawing it, I actually have the right pulley diameters. Now, um, this has got 1,200, 1,000s, and 800s. I actually, in my drives, I always make drive type number one. That's my convention. And then my other uh, high tension pulleys would be type two. And that's, I just, I like having my drives as a separate drive type. Um, so that's what I've done there. So we go in here again, oops, sorry, let me, just make this tall again and click to add elements so we're going to click here and now we have two options if I hold the control key and click it'll add a pulley 
or we can actually use any of the number keys. So if I use one, it'll enter polytype one. If I go to two, it'll do two, three will be three. So I know this is gonna be a, a polytype two in my case. I'm gonna hold down the number two key, which you can't see, but I'm holding down the number two, and I click, and it just added a type two pulley there. And it doesn't know the wrap angle because we haven't entered the second element length here. So when I just, I've let up on the two now, and I just click, and there we go. It's added another element and calculated that wrap angle. So we're going to do another pulley. I'm just going to hold down the, the number two key and click. Let it up. Click. Oh, these are type one, so that's a one. Click. Hold down one. Click. I think this is a four. Click there. Four. Click. I think this is a three. I'll go over to our take up pulley. So you get the idea. This is pretty darn slick here, what we can do. Looks like we got the uh, turnover, and now I'm just using my mouse scroll, um, my middle scroll button to to scroll around, and there we go. Now we look at that and go, well, that's not quite perfect, right? Well, we can connect, correct that really easily, and let's just start at the head just to show you what's going on here. If I right click and I say move point, I now have the option of either clicking the incoming or exiting part of the, the, the pulley. If I click the incoming flight, it moves everything behind it, moves the whole thing. If I click the exiting point, it moves just that pulley. So depending on what how you want to move the pulley or move everything, you can select whether you want to click, click the incoming side or the exiting side. So with that, we can go ahead and, and uh, clean all of this up. All right, you get the idea. Um, yeah, go ahead and just uh, move this guy over a little bit. Move that guy, and we'll move that one too. And sure, we'll move this guy too. And there we go. Now we still obviously for uh, this element happens to be our turnover, so I gotta make that a turnover. Um, and do all of that sort of stuff. Obviously, those aren't pulleys. These are uh, drives. So I got to change that to a motor. That's a motor. That's our take-up pulley. Boom, done. So that's pretty darn slick. Um, now, from here, you'd uh, normally, historically, we would then, I like to add a little element, and then we'd add a return element that mirrors the whole carry side, because we've got all these convex and concave curves and all of that stuff. We don't want to create all those elements. Um, here again, we've added a nice feature that uh, I'm going to just uh, reset and zoom in on our tail here. And I'm going to make a return element because I can see I've got a turnover here, so I'm going to have to draw all of this stuff. I'm going to just go back to about somewhere around here. So now if I right click, and again I go to my CAD overlay, there's a return element. What this is going to do is add a return element after this, going to insert this right after this flight wherever I click on. So I'm going to just click like um, right there. Boom. And you can see it just added the return element for us. And uh, we're right back to this point. We can now just continue on with another element. I don't know what this is, probably a type four. Do our turnover. Go off there, that's okay. And not sure what that is. All right, and let's just clean this up a little bit. We'll move these kind of where they're supposed to be here. Boom. And if I reset this, we can see, oh, let's turn off one to one scaling. There we go. We can see we got all our carry side and our return side. And if we zoom in here, uh, this last element here, a lot of times I would just go in right here and click the adjust to end. And what that'll do is basically, um, sometimes you have to click it a couple times because we got the wrap angle, but it basically calculates what this flight needs to be, the length and height to make that match back perfectly at zero, zero. And again, this is obviously our turnover again. And there we have it. Boom. Just like that, we've entered in this um, 
you know, relatively uh, complex conveyor pretty simply. And again, we can go ahead and, and move stuff around if, if we need to. Um, uh, the options here, we can save this file, and this is quite nice. This spe specific file, uh, when we brought it in, again, we don't bring any of the text or anything on purpose, just the uh, the elements. Uh, they're set to 50 millimeters, and right now there's essentially 7,000 lines, and we brought in all the layers. Uh, we do only bring the layers in by design, uh, whatever's visible. So if I like, you know, if I go to this layer and I hide this layer or, you know, whatever layers I, I can you know, hide or, or unhide. Only the visible layers are input right now. Maybe we'll show the layers as an input box down the road or, or do some fancy importing uh, options. But right now it brings everything in except for like dimensions and text and stuff like that because normally that just clutters things up. Um, and it also has this minimum length. And what this basically does, if I just zoom in, for example, on a on a head pulley here. This is obviously a circle. It was probably drawn as a circle, and, and we bring in circles, ellipses, arcs, uh, lines, polylines, all of that kind of stuff's all brought in. But then we break it up into individual lines. And um, basically, this is our, our minimum length. And if there's a bunch of, you know, if there was a bunch of tiny bolts and whatnot here, it, it essentially ignores them. Uh, we can see this if this is like 150, and I open up this file. Um, there, there you can see that it started to. Uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, polyline the um, the the circle there, and you can kind of sort of see it a little bit there. But we can see when we imported this file, it actually removed 25,000 lines, 83% of the file. We we essentially uh, merged together to make this file down to 5,000 lines, which is literally four kilobytes. 0.04 megabytes to save this with a Sidewinder file. So if I send this file to anyone, they don't have to have the drawing um, and they will still get all of this. And um, the default is 50. I mean, if I change this to 25, for example, and re-import re this, all right, now we only dropped it by 72% and there's 8,000 lines, but it's still only 60 kilobytes. It's still nothing, but and we can see we get a really nice resolution here. And again, maybe we'd want to, you know, move that pulley just perfect or whatever. You can go ahead and, and tweak things. So anyhow, I think this is a really nice new feature that uh, that people are going to like. Um, uh, very well, maybe by version 905 or whatever. We're, we're really liking this and using this quite a bit in Charles already. So there might be a, a whole bunch more options. But I wanted to get this video out to you guys to, to show you what it's all about. And... Um, yeah, and go from there. So if you have any questions, let us know, and I think that'll wrap it up. A uh, layer color is clearly just uh, what color you want to color your, your layer. Uh, again, I might even add an option to, to keep the original um, AutoCAD colors. I, I know what all the colors are, so I could recolor, draw the colors, but I actually think it looks, again, just cleaner for what information we really want by just bringing in everything as a, as a nice um, con solid color, because you really just want to make sure that you got your profile the way it's, it's supposed to look, and if we don't want to show it, we can just hide it there, but as long as we've got this save uh, checked, it will uh, save with our file. So thanks. Have a great day.